here. And now we have the privilege of going on a deep dive with Tony Piazza, a friend of mine I've connected with over the last six months through the Healy community, it's a friend of a friend of a friend. And I truly feel that we are brothers from another mother. <laughs> we, it's, we are, you know, <laughs> Tony is the, 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 the US version of Zach. <laughs> and so I would love to dive deep into Tony, who he is, what he's about. He's uh, a disabled war uh, veteran from the US. Uh, he's from that, been on a crazy health journey, discovering self-healing for himself, obviously being exposed to a lot of the, um, the medical system and, and how that's, uh, that rolls out for, I guess, veterans, but then choosing a different path and having the option to go down the self-healing at home route with frequency therapy, um, health and wellness knowledge with you know, ancient wisdom and also plant medicine. So we're gonna do a deep dive in, in some of these areas and really talk about even our emotions and what's really fueling our healing at home from Tony's point of view. And, and from that, he's been an inspiration because he's gone out to then help other people. His vision is to self empower people so they can also self heal at home. And so we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that and what you've been up to. And uh, it's been an incredible journey. I know you haven't stopped the last six months since you've had the Healy and since you've been, you know, working with plant medicine. <laughs> been, you've been on a mission, man. So, so excited to, to share your story with everybody. And, um, and so thanks so much for your time. But yeah, let's, let's just jump into your story. Like, how did you t t take us back to the beginning? You know, how did this all begin? Okay. Um, so basically I began my journey about three years ago um, when I was really awakened to um, the higher truths and the healing path. Um, prior to that, I had gone through like since childhood, I had a lot of anger issues and kind of, I was, I was lost. And then I was in the military got injured, broke my back, blew out my shoulder two times, compressed discs in my neck and um, nerve damage in my ways. Um, always had a big heart, but it was a lot of my emotions were misdirected. I didn't know how to, um, I wasn't very emotionally mature and I didn't know how to deal with my emotions outside of the gym and numbing myself with drugs and alcohol at the time. Um, and that just put me down a really dark path um, and my body was shutting down. Um, I had a lot of things going on legal. Um, my dad was in really rough shape and they wouldn't let me leave the state to take care of him. Um, and then my body was shutting down. I was losing jobs because I was in and out of the VA hospital and all they did was pump me with more pills and didn't have answers for me and put me in these cycles that were just, um, compounding and defeating. So I was very hopeless. Um, it led me to <clears throat> two different suicide attempts, um, which, I mean, I find that a lot of people who go through their awakening have to go and hit rock bottom. And so for me, that happened about three years ago. And then I finally had my surrender moment where I was like, if you're going to keep me alive, you know, give me some guidance, help me out. Um, and I meant that from the bottom of my like heart and soul and um, I turned myself in for um, suicidal um, ideations and stuff like that to the VA. And that was the longest, hardest walk of my life because it was almost like I felt like I was defeated. Um, but it was the biggest blessing for me. So after I got out of that, um, the psych ward for four days, I was kind of in a daze. But the following days, um, I had amazing events that. Um, transpired and vivid dreams that like woke me up to this new reality of who I am. So um, I dreamt about the Holy Trinity and like this can go on forever, but basically these events um, led me to being pulled from my body in waking state um, and frequencies just flowing through me and energies and overwhelming sense of love and peace and I was pulled from my body and I was just saying, I'm so sorry, what have I been doing with my whole life? Whatever you need me for, use me as a vessel and teach me. So um, from there, I was kind of guided on a path of healing and I, um, I, I 
dove, I dove deep into a lot of thin downloads. I was getting frequency and vibration and Nikola Tesla and looking into I am affirmation and reprogramming of my subconscious mind and thought pattern because I was a victim. Um, I had a victim mentality and all that does is breed more of that into your life because you're attracting that. So it's like a endless hopeless cave that you're digging yourself into. So I went for like six months straight every like within they say like within the first 30 minutes of waking up your subconscious mind is the most open and like reprogrammable. So what I was doing was um, listening to I am affirmations, Abraham Hicks, Neville Goddard, uh, motivational videos, and really restructured my thinking patterns. And then just started um, cutting out anything that was toxic, whether it be relationships. Um, I got out of a really long toxic relationship after I saw um, what was going on with that um, to the point where I was so dedicated to my path that I was um, almost homeless because I had lost my jobs and I kicked out my girlfriend and I was living on like $200 a month for food and transportation and um, going to food banks and crying while I'm opening these boxes. But I knew I had to stay true to my path. And then the blessing started to flow. Um, I was then um, introduced to a Christian healer who was teaching me how to do muscle testing. Kinesi he was a kinesiologist. And um, he was doing that as what with um, alongside a Rife machine. So um, another, so that was my introduction to frequency medicine and quantum healing. Um, he taught me muscle testing. He was able to tap into people via their picture or name, birth date, and birthplace, just like the Healy. So um, I was kind of brought into that and we were able to um, tap into that. So he tapped into my dad who was in Arkansas um, going through cancer and all these other um, things. And they were over prescribing him with narcotics. So he was going through some rough issues, but he was, he tapped into my dad and told me what metals were in my dad's blood from his hip replacement, that he was constipated and all sorts of uh, these other things. And I was a skeptic and I called him and my dad's like, how did you know all this? Like, what are you doing? And I told him I'm working with the healer. Is it okay if we send you healing? And he's like, yeah, I'll take any healing you can send me. And then the next day he actually texted me and said he was able to go to the bathroom and that he slept the best he has in a long time. And so that was really what sparked it. And then um, while the, he was trying to do healing work on me, my channels were very open. I would start breaking down and crying in gratitude, like constantly during this whole awakening process, which is magical and I do it now it's just maintaining that vibration of gratitude um but when he was trying to work on me my my energies were so powerful he ended up leaving the room several times and came back crying and he's like you're just like me I have to teach you how to do this so that's where I was mentored by him we were helping homeless people um doing the muscle testing and hooking them up to the rife machines killing parasites and um doing all sorts of healing with their wounds and then he was taking me around to hospitals and I was just holding, placing my hands and holding space. And it was incredible things that were happening. So, um, and then I wanted to venture away be, from that because I knew, and nothing against organized religions, but they're very limited in their scope and what they, who they can offer like their help to. So um, I went to school for, massage therapy and energy work and the more I did this the more profound things were happening when I was holding space for people and I really started stepping into my power and um, that led me to being introduced to ayahuasca one of my friends I had done sales with like two years prior hit me up seeing all my spiritual posts on Facebook he's like dude have you done ayahuasca and I was like uh no but I want to you know and so that led me to the path of sitting in these sacred ceremonies and um it really opens your eyes and um it's so much like human like our our words can't grasp the power of these medicines and where you go and the the unconditional love that is felt in those higher realms when you're sitting with source and all of creation and you're able to look at all of your wounds and your traumas from a much higher perspective to then release those burdens that you carry. 
Um, so my first ayahuasca experience was amazing. I went through some cosmic surgeries where, I mean, there was vibrations going through my whole body that were indescribable and I was releasing all sorts of pain and tensions. And, um, like I said, I suffered a lot of abuse and, um, I was able to release these things on a much deeper level. And it's all about finding the proper people. I'm going to back up because don't just go to do these plant medicines with anybody. I was very fortunate and guided on my path. Um, but it's very important to be able to go into these spaces with intention on what you want to address um, and like dive deeply into your being so that you can live more purely from your heart um, with intention and of service to others to find your purpose. Um, and it's been amazing for that. So from there, I was shown my life path working with plant medicines and helping others. And um, I ended up being guided to spending uh, 22 days in the Peruvian jungle with a shaman and um, where you do plant diets. And that's where you really eat a limited diet of bland foods um, so that you can create and establish relationships with plants. And these different plants bring different powers and um, knowledge to you. Um, so I dieted several plants and you very secluded, you don't wanna be interacting with anyone and you'll get either in your dream world, dream space or just ideas and songs will come through to you. And it really helps you to dive deeper into yourself and your truth. So <laughs> let me know if I'm over talking or if you wanna ask any questions. Um, I love but, it, keep going, keep going, keep, this is, <laughs> And from so what Tony said to me, this is one of his first interviews. So this is, <laughs> I love how real and raw it is and, and just keep going, brother. And yeah, I've got a bunch of questions. So whenever you feel. <laughs> okay, we can, well, well, I'll keep going and then we'll address them. Um, so from there, the, the shaman, I was, I'm a, I was able to move and operate in these ceremonies um, which isn't normal for most people. Most people, you're like in your own zone, but I was able to recognize energies and um, be able to come out of the medicine to assist other people. Um, so from there, I was invited to help facilitate ayahuasca ceremonies because I would allow um, the divine to work through me and um, help others going through these harder, more vulnerable states. Um, but basically, when you go into these spaces, you have to be willing to surrender completely um, all of your ideas and structures and beliefs of what you think life is to come out better with more wisdom. It's like going into a dream state. And if you're able to surrender and fully like open up to the experience, you're given such divine wisdom and guidance and um knowledge and it's just a very powerful experience um i've even held um private ceremonies for who is now one of my best friends he was a special forces um sniper marine and, um a mercenary and then a hell's angel who came to me through my ptsd psychologist um and it within a weekend of going through these um basically we do a, what's called a tobacco purge which is a very strong tobacco tea and what it's supposed to do is cleanse you energetically and your whole system so um you drink that and very shortly after you're purging so you're throwing everything up but it's it like lightens you up and it's a tobacco is a very powerful plant um it's a master plant it's a cleanser a grounding tool um, and it's a purification so it's not as a whole different connotation for versus what we're taught here in America and where around the world like it's not it's very sacred so um, we do that and then we did cambo which is the frog 
medicine that's poison. So in the jungle, I was actually, I went with the shaman son and we caught these frogs and they're, they almost know that, that that's their purpose. <laughs> it's so weird. Um, you go there and all you did, all they did was chop down a long stick and their frogs are just chilling up in the tree and you just put the stick up to it and the frog gets on it and you bring it down. And so I had it just hanging out on me the whole time. And I was like, this is amazing. But the the poison, they have no predators. So they're very chill. Um, and they harvest the medicine from the frogs um, in a very sacred, respectful manner and then leave them. Uh, I think it's like four months um, for them to regain all that again. But um, from there, um, your arm is, they burn your arm, like almost like a cigarette burn, but they use a vine or something. And then they scrape that layer of skin off and then the medicine is placed there. And that's supposed to be, it can be a very spiritual experience, but it is a, it's, they call it nature's um, vaccine. So it'll make all of your, you'll purge. Um, in the jungle I did, they start you with uh, one to three dots and there were 17 of us and I volunteered to go first. Uh, because I'm not, I don't fear death. I know that it doesn't exist. And um, we just transition to these other realms. And so I'm always excited to dive into myself more. I'm like, what else can happen? Show me like, you know, um, and I, and so they, they started with me and they did three dots and then they kept moving. And then the next two people they did, and they were starting to, what happens is like, you start kind of going out of it and then you vomit and like you purge a lot of stuff from your system because it purges all your organs and um, acids out um, to kind of reset your system. Well, the two people after me were going <laughs> and nothing was happening to me. And I'm just like, and the shaman's like, you're strong. <laughs> and so he comes back and puts three more dots on me and they're videoing me. And um, I was just describing what was going on. So your heart rate starts pumping like, really fast and then it starts heating up and then it's almost like there's pressure in your head like you you have water in your ears and you're really feeling like this strong powerful medicine flow through you and then I just said I surrender to the medicine do whatever you need with me and then I actually act <laughs> I ended up kind of nodding off because it felt like opiates almost hit me and um and they brought me back with water and then I purged and from there I was good. So it's like, you, it's almost like a reset button. Um, I don't even know where to go from here, but um, so everywhere I've gone, I've been guided. And then I've been helping facilitate ceremonies here in the US. Um, and that's been very powerful through my healing and transformation. Um, I'm a completely different person. I just had a friend visit me from high school two days ago and she's like, I am so proud of you. Like people don't understand where you came from. And it's even hard for me to picture myself as I was. I was, I had a chip on my shoulder. I was a very loving person if you knew me, but you could, people were scared of me. Like if I, I had a temper. Um, so it's very good to always look at how far you have come and be in gratitude for that and the transformations. Cause I know the, the healing journey can be very frustrating and you don't think you're making very much progress, but you have to stop and really sit there and look at how far you've come in life. Um, but through these journeys, I was guided right before COVID, I got intuitively guided to get out of the country and I ended up in Costa Rica. What was supposed to be nine days turned into eight months of amazing like soul diving um, healing work. Um, I was sat with Bufo, which is um, a, the Sonoran desert toad. They spend nine months of their life underground and then they come up and then their, their uh, excretions are harvested and then that is then smoked and it's like 10 times stronger than ayahuasca. Um, and it blasts you into your own death on so many levels of ego, and things that no longer serve you. And until you're with light beings, where we come from, supported in this blissed out state, 
And I just like kept repeating, like, I, I need nothing. I seek nothing. I am that I am. And I was just crying and like, so in so much gratitude, but it's just like, shows you how perfect life is. Um, and it really helps a lot of people shed a lot of things and get to the core of who you are. Um, and then I did Ibogaine, which was 24 hours of IMAX theater, living movie visions, clear as day like this. Um, <laughs> that was an incredible experience. I met a doctor in Costa Rica who was helping out US Navy SEALs with PTSD and addictions with this medicine. And he offered it to me and I had always wanted to do it. Normally it costs three to $5,000 and I was fortunate enough to get to do that. So um, with that, I was able to dive even deeper into my being um, where I went through all of my trauma, through my mom's life and her traumas, through my dad's. So then you see where all of this trauma has been passed down through generations and you understand that it's not their fault and that um, just gives you a bigger grasp on reality. And I saw all of my spirit animals. I saw potential timelines of what could occur with our soul. You could ask questions, get direct answers. I saw things that ended up coming true weeks later. So I'm a huge advocate in taking these journeys and I know it's a step into the unknown, but that's where you have your biggest growth and experiences is outside of that comfort zone and the ability to surrender and know that you're gonna be caught by the divine. Like with when you have pure intentions and you're going into these spaces like this. Um, and then I was working with more frequency devices. So, and this is around the time we, we got into communication. So I was working with, um, Tony, Tony, this uh, is, there's so much, so much awareness and uh, learning you've just shared with us. I just want to kind of back it up before we jump into, okay. the, into the frequency yeah. kind of device uh, arena. So you, you've shared so many incredible different insights and I'm like, I'm sure you could share about these stories for hours. You know, for me, what I'm most amazed at is that these are substances, these are plants. These are on our earth right now. They've been there for thousands of years and they've been used and somehow the, the information, if we're looking at information, the information field, looking at frequency, there's an information in these plants. If you, if we like food, if we go and eat McDonald's or fast food, there's an information that's translating to our body and it's causing impacts if you know we go and do mushrooms or plant medicine ayahuasca and these other ones that i didn't even know existed <laughs> <laughs> and we start you know there's an information that it's giving us and and i think growing up i saw psychedelics uh, as a, a category you know you've got alcohol which is mainly a depressant and you've got stimulants and you've got you know the different categories and psychedelics was like a oh my gosh like this is this is a, quite intense but when trying mushrooms for the first time or dmt for the first time these were like oh my god like these are these are this is information that you, needs to be as you said you come at it with reverence with respect mm -hmm. with with a with a communication from yourself because it's going to be it's going to be upgrading you uh your consciousness whether you like to like like it or not <laughs> it's, it's going to happen yeah. and so <laughs> I'm amazed that, you know, mushrooms, for example, they're one of the only things that can grow in a vacuum. So mushrooms can grow in space. I don't know if anyone knows this. And so I'm like, so they grow out of this planet, which means they're not from this planet. So what are they doing here? And there's, there's a theory on evolution that we, you know, that the apes found the mushrooms and it expanded our mind to a point where we could actually communicate and evolve. Um, and so I love that theory. I think that's great. And, you know, there's an intelligence with the myocilium with the communication lines of mushrooms where they share nutrition and it, and it helps to stimulate the brain. And, you know, I've had some of the best moments just looking at a tree <laughs> or meditating, right. you know, yeah. more fun than any alcohol, any other drug, you know, any other external experience. There's more fascinating information and learning to be done inside doing a whole bunch of mushrooms, closing my eyes like this, maybe listening to some binaural beats or something. And the sacred geometry, the ability to trance, um, I, yeah, just like 
transport myself and my understanding and memories and clear what's going on has been phenomenal. It's been probably one of the most healing things that I've done. Um, and so can you explain a bit more about psychedelics as a general, like maybe the history of why do people look at psychedelics and go, oh my gosh, it's scary. It's overwhelming. You know, like I think a lot of the media might have had a part to play in that. There's a new documentary on Netflix about psychedelics and people kind of um, talking about their experience and all these amazing uh, actors and musicians and things like that, trying to help people realize that they're not as scary as people have played them out to be. You know, you don't lose your mind or you get stuck, you know, maybe that does happen. But can you help us kind of change our beliefs on psychedelics and, and why do some people maybe have some negative connotations to them? Okay, yeah, for sure. Um, I, I was always scared of psychedelics growing up. Um, my first psychedelic was ayahuasca, so I stepped into the deep end. <laughs> um, but I was guided there and I was ready for it at the time. Um, but yeah, it has been demonized. And I think a lot of that is programming because it does make you think outside of the box and get away from society's programs to really tap into yourself and your soul and your purpose. And it brings you into a connected point of your heart and it, knowing of everything around you is connected in a heartfelt space. Um, I do think there was times when it was abused <laughs> and um that could have brought a different outlook on it. Um, for, I knew friends that were taking leg mushrooms and more of a recreational and drinking and doing that. And that's a whole different thing. You're not gonna get the same out of it. So that's why it's very important that when we venture into these places of the unknown and it is scary because we don't know what to expect and we're, we're afraid of losing control. And that's, there's a whole paradox to that, that when you actually allow and surrender into this, you have more control over, <laughs> over yourself because you're shedding these, these false ideals and structures that you think you're protecting yourself with. And, and, and you're really preventing the magic in your life and the connections to really um, come available to you. So, um, when preparing for these journeys, I help um, with that. Um, microdosing is amazing for people with depression, anxiety, and motivation. Um, and those are very low doses where you're doing like 0.1 um, is the average. You can up that, it's, I think it's 0.15 for a 150 pound person. Um, it depends. Um, but you taking those in conjunction with lion's mane is help, good for neural connection and nerves and creating new neural pathways in your mind. So um, it's very expanding. Um, these other ceremonies, with, the funny thing is like modern medicine numbs and puts band-aids on things and plant medicines allow you to access the root cause of these things that maybe you have subconsciously blocked yourself from. Um, that happened with me. I had a lot of trauma. I didn't even remember until I stepped into these things. Um, and you actually go to the source so that that can be released and that's healing you. And because a lot of these stored emotions actually turn into illness and disease within our bodies and minds and modern medicine and doctors are only taught to suppress symptoms with pills and other things that don't work. So. Um, these ceremonies allow you to dive into these spaces of yourself and release these emotions and let things flow. And um, they're just very beautiful medicines that need to be like revered, respected. And it's for people, like it's not for the faint of heart. You're gonna have to address things that maybe you don't wanna look at within yourself. Um, but in the end of it all, you have much more respect for yourself, much more love for yourself. And then that in turn shows outwardly to the world around you. And then you can pick someone else up when they're struggling and have that empathy and know that like we all come from the same place. We all have struggled in different ways and we all deal with our traumas in different ways. But instead of band-aiding and escaping, these are, these are doorways and you have to do the work. Like you can do the medicine and have these amazing experiences, but if you're not integrating that into your life, it's a waste. So 
it's very important to really have that structure and knowing and support when you go into these things because they can be very heavy um, while you're working through some of these things. But that's why it's um, very important to have that support system. And um, I'm very fortunate to have that. And I'm very open to helping others as they transition through that um, and approach these parts of themselves because I've seen how it changes people's lives um, in such profound ways that it's just incredible and it gives me the chills like right now <laughs> it's just the healing and then being able to step into some of your power and to love yourself on a level where you're not going to go back into these habits of like poor eating like it's diet's huge so I was guided to really go more plant-based and organic and healthy. Um, know where your food comes from, you know? So it's kind of like a lot of this, the energies you're picking up in your food, if you think about, um, I grew up hunting in Wyoming and stuff. So it was very evident if the animal was spooked or anything like that, it would taint the meat and you're picking on that energy. So it's, um, if you're thinking about all the livestock and all of these things that are like, abused and tortured, depressed, and you're taking on not only all the stuff they're injecting these animals with, but the, the, the energies behind it. So that's why you wanna be eating happy things and food and um, blessing that and stuff. Um, I don't know, I'm going off on tangents. <laughs> it's perfect, you know, maybe that's the new diet. I, I, I eat, it's the happy diet. I only eat things that were happy. <laughs> um, so yeah. <laughs> No, I think that's really interesting. And, you know, for anyone listening at home, this is something where please do your own research. You know, don't believe anything we're saying, you know, be self-empowered. You know, the reason we wanted to put this on is to obviously share Tony's story and experience and whatnot and reach out to him if you have any specific questions. Um, the Instagram is uh, A-M-P-I-A-Z-Z-A. So A-M-P-I-A-Z-A 22. I put it in the, in the group. In, in the quantum community group and also in the chat here um, or message me I can send you his details after but uh, yeah it's really important that you know everyone takes this into their own hands and that's where right now this year it's not happy new year it's happy truth year for me and so the truth is coming out in every area <laughs> and so you know we're talking about frequency therapy with Healy we're talking about plant therapy with food you know these are ancient these are things that have been around us. We just haven't really had that awareness. So sometimes we do just need, you know, an interview like this, or maybe go read a book or go watch a documentary. You know, the DMT documentary on Netflix is quite interesting. You know, um, would you recommend any other resources for people to go and kind of self-learn and, and do a bit more research, Tony? Uh, there's a lot of documentaries um, from Shock to Oz, is a really good one. Um, where it deals with veterans and dealing with PTSD and healing through ayahuasca. Um, I, I should have wrote all this down, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, Tony, my opinion is... Sorry, Tony, to interrupt. We have, um, I was writing in the chat there that shock to awe. Mind Medicine Australia have a... They just go around city to city and premiere that movie and have a scientific panel afterwards. Um, so anyone can ask questions. So that's the exact movie that you're talking about. It is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Good to hear. Awesome. If you if you could find that, maybe put that in the chat. I can put that in the group. That'd be awesome. Um, that's okay. Is yeah. So I think there's you know um, there's a, there's a bunch of books you can buy and things like that online. And and obviously just do your research, guys. Don't rush into something like this. This is something that might. For me, I find it's usually I'm. I'm not out, if, if I find that I'm really wanting to, I guess, chase that experience of a psychedelic experience, I feel I'm not coming from the right place. I feel like no, yeah. coming, if, I, if I've ever done that, it's never really ended very well. So coming- You from, definitely have to feel a calling to it. It seems like that's where you're in um, alignment to that. And I do know a lot of um, amazing people around the world that can hold that space. And I know that are trustworthy and coming from a heart space. There are a lot of um, facilitators and shamans out there that are taking advantage of the movement as well. So I'm more than happy to help with resources on that. 
Um, and again, I'm not a medical doctor and I can't give you medical advice, but um, I always want people to go find out for themselves. Don't believe me, go find out for yourself. Every individual's experience and soul is unique. So you're gonna have different experiences and different things you're gonna have to work through, whether it be this lifetime, ancestral trauma and things like that. So it's, um, I empower you to do the work because there's nothing more um, fulfilling than being able to do that. And then also be able to reach back and hold space for others in their journey. So um, it's a very powerful um, experience. And the more you do this in the safe spaces, the more you come out with a higher awareness and ability to kind of live your truth and speak your truth and live from your heart space, which is the, what the world needs more of. So I'd love to know, you know, from your experience working with a bunch of people, what can someone do to prepare themselves for, for this? Obviously self-learning, you know, tuning in, meditating and seeing if this is something they want to do for themselves and not doing it for, like, how can someone prepare for this? Should they be fasting? Should they be eating well? Should they be, you know, da, 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 da. is there a way of helping prepare your body to get the most experience, the best experience, the healthiest experience from the medicine? Definitely cleaning up the diet. Like before ayahuasca, they have a strict diet and there's no meats and sugars and spicy stuff. And it's very limited in the fats and oils and stuff so that you're very, you're respecting the medicine and um, things like that. And if you're doing, um, any of these other journeys like mushrooms or something, I always say fast, um, you want to respect it, go in like with that respect and knowing that you're sacrificing and willing to put in this work. And then you get that much more out of it. And then you set your intentions on what you want to get from it as well. So, um, yeah, when you're working with ayahuasca, it's all plants, like you're going back to more of a plant-based diet. And um, high vibrational living foods. So back to frequency and vibration. So that all plays a part in everything that you're you're doing and what you're made of. You're putting in information into your body through what you're eating, and then also with Healy and other frequency devices. This is helping us to balance and harmonize our system so that we're functioning highly and our body can heal itself. And um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> You're perfect. Yeah, so cleaning your body out, cleansing, fasting, um, looking at the emotions as well. I know before this, you you drew a couple cards to kind of tune in. Do you want to share a bit more about that? Because I feel there's a big uh, part to play with the emotion. There's a, there's a, one of my favorite documentaries is E-Motion, E-Motion. And it talks about- Oh, yeah trauma and how they get stored in the body and how that shows up in illness and there's some <laughs> some most amazing therapies out there to help release trauma you know tapping or psychotherapy or frequency therapy or you know conversation. emotion code emotion and, code is a great book yeah and the emotion code so um looking looking at these and, and preparing your body is is a really good good one and obviously be weary of who you're working with you know don't you know if there's there's these shamans that can be kind of cowboys and, and out there just to make a buck right so um i guess be weary of that and, and make sure you have the recommendation the right recommendation in terms of like flipping a gear now is there anything else people should know about psychedelics just before we kind of go into frequency therapy um any other past there are contra tra, contra indications so always research that like you can't do ayahuasca and these other medicines if you're on antidepressants and anxiety meds and other stuff like that so um that's where i love this healy um a lot of people are on medications and if you can have something else to help balance and harmonize your system so that you can wean off of those and then take these deep dives um that's very important so always look for contraindications and make sure that you don't have any health issues um, that could potentially put you in harm's way. Because some of these medicines um, like a boga and things like that, um, a lot of it, a boga is used mostly, it's recognized mostly for um, addictions, helping people break addiction and stuff like that. Um, unfortunately, a lot of those people um, have lied about not being, taking part in those drugs and it has led to 
death, like in certain cases. So it's very important that do the research, know that who you're going with and that they're asking you these questions so that you know that you're in a trusted, protected space and kind of go into it. It's not something that you're just going to go party into. Like you really need to have confidence in it feel yourself like in um and the, the person that's holding space that you can be trust because you're in a very vulnerable sp space you're going to be crying potentially throwing up and shedding a lot of emotional stuff so it's very important to feel that you can be vulnerable around those 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 facilitators this is this is awesome this is like a, a beginner's guide to understanding um more of the insight this is a conversation i think we should be having more and more and um if we're all we are all on a health journey and you know plants are there to um be be a massive stepping stone for so many so um that's really interesting tony thanks so much for sharing all that and i'd love to know now you know moving forward you've you've tried so many different frequency therapy machines uh and <laughs> And, you know, you moved from Costa Rica back to the U.S. to get your Healy. Um, and you've been sharing it nonstop for the last six months. It's been really inspiring. It's helped so many people. And so I just want to know, you know, how, 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 do you, how do you describe the Healy to someone for the first time? And why are you so excited about it? Well, I say that it's a, a German um frequency device that helps balance and harmonize your bioenergetic field so that your body can um, heal itself and kind of find harmony and you can function at your natural and higher uh, levels um <laughs> i don't know so for me it's just i'm very excited about frequency medicines because of i've seen the impacts of them and i know that they work and it hits everything at the core level as well um, I just was in Sedona, Arizona, working with these other powerful ones, but none of them are like, they're way more expensive and they don't, you can't scan yourself. You don't really know what you're addressing, but it addresses everything at once. Um, so this might, I'm gonna be talking to them about them getting this involved in their, um, we can't say a, di a diagnosis, but you know, it helps to kind of direct your attention to certain areas. If you're scanning yourself and you see certain organs come up, um, you can address that through diet as well, you know, so there's certain ways that you, this can impact in many different ways of your healing. And it's another tool because we're constantly bombarded with harmful frequencies, toxins in our food, air and water, stressors, the fear and the well, everything else pushed out there. So that's going to throw and cause imbalances throughout your system. This helps bring a higher awareness to what's going on within you. And then it's also a tool to help you address those things. Um, it's wearable, it's portable. Not a lot of these devices are that functional. Like I haven't found another one like this. So it's, I love the Healy for that reason. And it's, it's like a little, I don't I can't say that. I'm not going to say it, but a doctor in a box can't say that. <laughs> you know, it's like something that you can use to help level the playing field. Um, just like anything, all these are tools, but it all comes down to your discipline and other things that you're implementing in your life with meditation, breath work, um, all these different other biohacks to really start to balance and harmonize yourself so you're functioning highly and you can give more of yourself to others. Once you're balanced and harmonized, you got to fill your cup first. So the Healy helps you do that in many different ways. And then you can fulfill your purpose, whatever that is, whatever your magic is that you're bringing. And so I, I knew that you, when you found out about the Healy, you had, you had another frequency machine, check your, your, um, your coherent level with the Healy. And you, you, you actually use another frequency to <laughs> test if the Healy was right for you. So what, what was that device? And tell us what are these other frequency devices you've been using? Cause I think this is, they're so fascinating like they're so interesting it is an exciting area but no one knows about this stuff you know and that's right. why really is so excited to share with people an alternative to the other system and you know help people as you said even the playing field to bring people back bringing the power back to the people 
So yeah, what are some of these other devices and, and take us on that journey? Cause I think that's really interesting. Okay, so the one that I tell you about is uh, radionics. Uh, my friend Martin, who if anyone is interested, it's similar to the time waiver system, very in depth, it can scan and do all that, but you can also ask questions and get answers and it'll give you a percentage field. So anything under 50 is leave it alone. If it's above 50, it's beneficial. And then if it's above 90s or 96, he says, it's like a this like do this, right? So it's gonna be very beneficial for you. Um, so yeah, I was a skeptic with the Healy because the person bringing it to me wasn't really knowledgeable about frequencies and I was like in it. So it was kind of like, uh, I don't know. And then um I've worked with bioresonance, radionics devices, all of these kind of work in that same similar field. Um, but I scanned the Healy and it came back at like a 98%. And he's like, or no, it was a hundred. So like, he never sees that. And I was like, whoa, okay. And then um, I asked, am I supposed to be using the Healy for myself and my own healing? Or am I supposed to be doing it for myself and helping others in the business aspect of it? And it was 43% for me and like 90, 93% for myself and helping others. So then I was all in because this radionics device, I, after an ayahuasca ceremony in Costa Rica, I was on one of those Indo boards and it shot out from under me and I like landed on my wrist and I thought I broke it. And I have pictures, it was nuts. Um, but it was so bad that I thought it was gonna be weeks. and. Um, I ended up getting tramadol from the pharmacy because I was in so much pain and I hadn't done any of that for a long time. And then I had him send frequencies to my wrist and literally overnight, the swelling was gone and it was mobile again. So all of this is like bringing more credence to frequency and vibration, the quantum field, the, the unified information field, which you can access through these plant medicines, like it's all tied together. So. Um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with all that. <laughs> it's just like, let's, let's, let's take a moment to register that for a second. So, you know, no wonder there's this massive, um, shift in, in where the world is going. You know, these, I think the thing that most, most frustrates me <laughs> about the world is that there's these hidden technologies that could have helped us live a healthier, happier, more wealthy life, abundant life for everyone. But they've suppressed them. They've held them back. You know, Rife, um, Nikola Tesla, you know, these, then there's all these other frequency machines we don't, we'll probably never hear about. They were burnt or destroyed back in the 1900s where the big pharma, these massive medical associations would come and burn, you know, acupuncturists and naturopathy and, you know, all these amazing, um, iridology specialists, you know, uh, natural practitioners, their patents and things. So, you know, the hidden technology or cars these days that can drive off water or drive off oil, you know, like what do we have access to? And now we're waking up and this is where we all have such an important time to stand in that power and be like, there is an alternative. And I think some people get, I think for me this year, this theme is all about helping people lead with confidence in their own life and vulnerability. And so leading with that confidence, whether it is sharing your business or sharing your, your modality or sharing Healy or, you know, just speaking up when you, you don't think something's right on social media or in person, we all have that power every day. So, you know, as you said, bringing that power back and really um, giving people a solution that you don't even you need a cream or the painkillers or, or whatever to help your wrist. And overnight, these frequencies help support that. Now, you know, some people are going to be like, show me the evidence, show me the, the literature, show me the peer reviewed stuff. And that is only limited to the physical, but there's this whole uh, quantum space that's measured, it's physics, you know, that you can't really sometimes measure the, um, you know, the quantum space. So this is where you have to have an experience of it. And you've had multiple experiences. So your posture and confidence is so high that you can talk to anyone about this, but people need to kind of have that experience too. So 
Um, that's really, really interesting. It definitely comes down to the experience because you can research these things all day, but it's like you have to experience it for yourself. So that's why I like this. You can go scan and do these things and like show people immediately. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of people who try to overanalyze and want it down on paper when you're not going to get what you need with these plant medicines or anything else like this that's working on a much higher level, you know, because our, our language is so limited. Um, and it comes down to like you receive a knowing and an understanding and a feeling. And we need to start learning how to tap back into that. Um, our own intuition and our own ability to be self-aware and our imbalances and going through those processes. So, and so I've, I've heard that you spend most your day, most of your days at the moment down at the Carver bar, just <laughs> apparently scanning people, treating people, you know, you're sharing on social media more than anyone that I know, um, you know, with people like all these, are they all your friends with these people with selfies with the Healy? Or they just ran. They become my friends. <laughs> I'm just down there uh, introducing it to people. And um, the Kava Bar is another form of plant medicine that's um, an alcohol replacement. So you're not hurting your body and lowering your vibration. It's actually um, from like the Fijian Islands and it's a root and um, it gives you a relaxed, euphoric, um, social. Um, feeling and you can't overdo it you're not going to become intoxicated or have a hangover so it's a good place for me to hang out and talk about everything that I work with and have somewhat of an open ear to these things and then I just introduce um, the Healy to people and I run free scans and I've helped so many people in so many ways but I got to be careful about what I share on that <laughs> so um it's just incredible. Um, and it's an honor to be able to share this device and get it out to other people because it gives people their power back in their own health. You're not um, getting pills and diagnoses and hopeless things. You're actually getting something that you can help address your imbalances and then live a happier life. This thing has changed my life and sleep alone. Um, like I, I have all this pain and all sorts of stuff. So I would pay for it for just to sleep. Um, I wake up rested and um, sleep throughout the night when I usually I would only get like two hours um, for pain. Um, significantly reduced when every time I have some, some aches or pains going on and I run some programs, you know, so um, fitness like I've used it with working out and I wasn't I had more stamina and I wasn't sore and then I didn't use it the next time and I was sore for four days so <laughs> like it's it's a it's a huge benefit and it's a tool for you to use on your daily so I just want more people to have exposure to these things and open their minds to stuff outside of um, what we've been conditioned to believe is all there is and just bring more knowledge and stuff into people's lives so that they can start to take their power back and with that power and health comes freedom freedom to pursue anything and then obviously the healy just sharing and helping people can give you some financial freedom so that you can then help yourself and others more um not only that like uh a big thing is like for helping children and animals that are going through things because they can't um, they're not developed enough to do these meditative practices and breath work and all this other stuff. So this gives you another way to help them balance and harmonize their fields and kind of be, you know, more in tune. Um, I don't know. It's just a huge blessing. And I'm so happy that all of these things are starting to come out. Um, I didn't bring the paper that I had of the other devices. Otherwise I would share them, but, um, it's like photon light therapy using noble gases and frequencies. And I was laying on another um, frequency bed that vibrates through these different tones. And it feels like you're floating. And I had full on visions like I was in medicine ceremonies. So um, it's coming out and I'm excited to share these just tools with people. <sighs> so, so exciting. I'd like to um, just throw something in the mix here just for the next couple of minutes. I've got my Healy linked up to the screen. So I thought, how about we do a quick scan 
maybe we can do a collective scan of the world right now or you or someone or should we should we do a group scan of I don't know collectively of yeah. the planet right now what do you, what, should we should we that might get a little chaotic with the things going on but yeah um so that you know I, i'm gonna let's just see and i'd love to know you know how you explain walking through this do you, do you guys see this you guys see the okay that's just the disclaimer um so when, when you're sharing and doing the scan for people, Tony, how do you, how do you describe, because there's two apps, right? And we've got in here, the analyze app, and then we've got the other app for the frequencies. Um, I think we do like a, like a global scan to see maybe like, like a group. Have you ever done a group scan before? No, I haven't. You want to put in earth? <laughs> yeah, I think we, should it be an organization plant animal yeah we'll do we'll do a group <clears throat> we'll do planet earth D day of foundation. <laughs> <laughs> how do you go back to the beginning like <laughs> <laughs> um so let's just say um oh gosh what is, when does this go back to 1700? Well, is that? Oh, it goes yeah. back. To, oh no, that's just the date. Well, collectively maybe today, what January, January, um, what's the date today? 13th, 14th in Australia. 14th. Um, place of foundation so this is just um how do you spell gaia is that you spell gaia <laughs> yeah <laughs> um what's the, what's earth's email phone number no that won't, won't happen <laughs> this is going to be interesting <laughs> we've never done this before this is just experimental right <laughs> um and so for usually what you do is you'd sit down and and, and so how, how do you usually run the run the healy for people tony uh, first, I do an aura scan and kind of go over um, how that picks up on your energy centers and potential blockages that could be there that you're currently dealing with or from past because it pulled up past trauma for me. Um, and it can even dip into ancestral. And then a lot of my healer friends, like if they're working with a lot of people, will pick up on other people's stuff. So I always tell them, you'll know what resonates for you and then kind of walk them through what each of them means. And mm -hmm. um send them the emails and then I'll go into the bioenergetic scan of the body and the mind and the meridians and all of that. Okay. Amazing. So maybe what I do here is planet earth. We get a photo of the earth. These if are, you can trust those. Things. These are all made up in <laughs> the day, right? Yeah. <laughs> all been edited, but um, let's give this a go. I don't know. Which one should we do? Planet Earth. Who really knows? Who really knows what the Earth looks like? Let's say, let's say this one. Uh, choose from gallery. There we go. So then you then because you can also do, you know, some people are doing these distance scans and, and treating treatments and things like that. So I guess I'm just going to, let's, let's put our intention on earth and uh, collectively do a scan. Should we do that? Yeah. So I'm just holding the Healy everyone and um, tune into the earth. Okay, Let's see what comes up. Ooh, Oof. look at this. So for those who don't know, there's, there's the different body chakras. Now the earth also has chakras, uh, different, different locations on the earth. There's different energy centers from my understanding. And so we're just, we're playing in that space right now of 
this reading the energy flow of the earth chakras so root to crown and in this moment the crown is like pretty pretty low so that's really interesting um and for those who want to understand i guess crown chakra and root chakra there's more of an explanation of what that means and different affirmations um collectively maybe we can share affirmations for the earth i don't know people are meditating now and changing the human human resonance of the planet um and with with the next scan you can actually do do you ever put a focus in here i have not i <laughs> didn't so, even know that you could do that some some people are doing a folk changing the focus saying oh um uh how can i how can i um how can I become my healthiest version or asking a question or setting an intention or, you know, <clears throat> is that how you manifest? Th this is part of, yeah, part of that. And so I'm still playing around with it. Debbie, she's pretty amazing um, at figuring this stuff out, but uh, the intention, what would be the intention to figure a bit, bit more pinpointed around the earth right now? What should we ask the earth? World peace and love. <laughs> How do we create world peace and love? <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know. It has to be a question. You can't just focus on world peace. Um. <laughs> oh, I guess it is a question when you start. So never mind. Yeah, I don't know. What have we got here? Who's putting this in the chat? Brandon, how about this? Um, what would it take to receive on all um, levels? um what love or healing or something like that so what would it take to receive all levels of uh or high love high vibration of love or something like that the highest so you want to start it with um what would it take to achieve and then finish your question oh to receive to achieve the highest form of love well, what would it take to resonate at the frequency of love? And, yep. And um, and we could put in and also release sabotages and blocks. So what would it take to achieve the highest form of love and release all sabotages and blocks? Okay. Amazing. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Is that right? What would it take to achieve the highest form of love and release all sabotages and blocks? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so um, I love that. And I think what I might do is connect. Uh, can I, can I copy this for a second? I'm just going to go back because I'm going to tick all the chakras. I didn't tick all of them. Oh no. Oh, wow. Difficulty. Oh, it's not working. All right, we're just going to do this. Cool. So, so how do you describe this next next scan, Tony, to people? Um, I don't know if I'm breaking it down as I should be, but I usually just go over like what chakra it is, where it's located in the causal body, what color it's supposed to be, and then the present state, and then I just explain to them the present state is something that's in their field. And then the desired state is the frequencies that are sent to help balance and harmonize that chakra. This is, this is quite interesting. So the present state here is the person has an intellectual attitude towards their life. <clears throat> so what do you guys think that means? <laughs> Maybe the world is more stuck in the intellect, in the mind rather than being, you know, coming from a spiritual, more heart-centered place, potentially. The father slash men means... There's a lot of misinformation and stuff going on, so it's a big information war on the mind. All the fake news right now? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's interesting. The father, man, slash men means safety in the life of the person. So maybe people are seeking safety and security through a president. Or that's through, a life theme on the potency list as well. The D100,000, that reference, that's come up as a life theme. 
100. Well, it's a patriarchal like world right now. And I think the divine feminine is starting to step up too. So it's going to be a shift. Mm. Right when you said that, I turned to my notebook and it said matriarchal healing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The person believes that they have nothing to give, i.e. love. Oof. So let's change out the planet. The planet believes that we have nothing to give, i.e. love as a collective. Wow. What do you guys think about that? I think it's not hard to shift in the potency level on two out of 10. So we're good. Um, uh, and it's in the spiritual wrong acting. So it's not going to be long before we are on the right path. But right now it's prevalent. There you go. <laughs> I love this discussion. This is great. The mother tried to be the perfect mother or the mother was looking for her own safety and, and religion. So maybe the planet was always tried to be perfect and providing and create safety that, and in some kind of, you know, structure. It, was, it doesn't have to be religion specifically, but it can kind of be some kind of order. And now man has come and ruined the planet. <laughs> What do you take take from that, Tony? Uh. I don't know. That's a tough one. It's interesting, hey. When this Mother came, Earth. Yeah, yeah, maybe Mother Earth. So yeah, healing of mother relationship, money, home, job, and confidence. Interesting. When the person is in a relationship, they trust life. The dependency towards other people becomes clear and with it, the connection manipul connected and with it, the connected manipulation. Ooh, what do you guys think about that? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe when man, when we have a relationship with the physical, in things that are external like money or jobs or career aspirations, there's, there's, a, there's a manipulation that happens. I didn't see, yeah. <clears throat> we, we can get swayed or distracted. This is really trippy. For those that are listening, this is the first time I've ever done this. <laughs> so like, I just thought we'd kind of flow with it. Uh, we'll read the other ones. The person has an idea of their authority. However, it is not a natural one. They are always being questioned in this role. <laughs> We're forgetting our natural crown, sovereignty and authority and power. The person, ex mm. you want to say anything about that, guys? Um, the person experiences the realization that they have more and more to give in this life because they long for those um, for these changes to happen. The person experiences the realization that they have more and more to give in this life because they long for these changes to happen. Wow. We're in the middle of a big shift. And that's all coming up in the spiritual realm on the potency list. They're all spiritual. And how are you the getting that? Warfare. <laughs> Is that through one of the numbers here, the LMX or L? LMLX. Um, uh, so I'm reading off the time waiver sheet and I've got a little. Ah, could you yeah. send that to me? I that's, can. That's really cool. Yep. Person feels joy with other and, people. Oh. Oh, you go, you go. I was just going to say, and you guys know you can go in there and change all of those potencies and everything too. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yes. Yeah, so up here. Yeah. Or in, in, in the edit section. In the edit for that specific chakra, you can change the, all those potencies that Michelle were, was just reading out. You know, if you use the chart. Wow. The person feels joy with other people. However, they always expect to be hurt a feeling of this feels too good to be true surfaces i feel that with these silly lockdowns people going out having fun and then oh my god you got to go in and stay 
COVID safe. So that's that's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> The person is lonely. Oh, people are watching too much Netflix and they're lonely. <laughs> so <clears throat> that's really interesting, guys. Maybe we'll just do a quick little vibrate for 37 seconds. Um, so <clears throat> just to wrap it up, Tony, like that was, look, that was, for those who are listening, this is just a random, I thought, you know, this is kind of fun. I think maybe we do this every time. <laughs> Different theme yeah. each week, do a collective like analysis of what's collectively going on. Um, and uh, any any kind of final comments around what we've mentioned? I want to kind of wrap it up. And um, yeah, really appreciate your time, the awareness, how vulnerably and how heart centered you are communicating this message. Because I feel a lot of people might be kind of getting caught up in in maybe the hype or the rah rah of something new and exciting. But I really love how you ground the knowledge um, and you really keep it level headed in and just really practical you know a lot of people can be kind of stuck a bit too spiritually airy fairy but you really bring it down to a realistic logical kind of um you know awareness that's helped me kind of see psychedelics from a, a new point of view so thank you so much for for sharing here you have yeah brother no problem i did go and hunt down um these other devices i've been uh, working with they're very powerful um, it's called the Photon Genie from the Skilling Institute. So, okay, cool. This thing, this thing uh, is kind of like uh, I'm sure you've heard of ozone therapy, but it creates that through these noble gases and frequencies. So your body produces more oxygen itself without having to go through the injections and all that stuff. Oh, cool. Very powerful. The Skilling Institute is where it comes from, and they've had like world-class frequency stuff. So, this is the other one. It's a sauna. <laughs> How's the writing? It looks like it's something but, out of space. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. It's pretty. Our... It's it's an amazing device. I'll show you our new frequency device too. Um, photogenius.com and edskilling.com or if you want to look them up this is another frequency machine we recently bought my mom is a naturopath <laughs> so this measures the meridians the, the voltage of our organs and all the uh, acupressure points so acupuncture you put a needle in but instead of doing that you do um <laughs> I geek out on this stuff so much. So <laughs> I, you hold, hold the, the rod to connect and then you use this pen to test the voltage of all the lung, liver, meridians, uh, toxic load. Oh, that's awesome. And then you see, and then you can put um, the frequency of say like heavy metals or radiation or whatever it is, um, pesticides on this. And you can see if your body's toxic in certain contaminants in real time uh, and whether certain supplements will actually help to support those those challenges for the body so it's and then mom has like a live blood analysis machine and tests the oxidative stress and the body you can see your blood on the microscope in real time so i think that's well really so but in terms of the healy like this is so big this was like three thousand right. half thousand australian dollars and compared to the Healy, same price, kind of, and you've got a portable one. You know, I walk along the beach with this while I'm grounding and looking, you know, sun gazing. You can't do that with any of these other devices. So I love the portability of the Healy. Um, exactly. What else you got there? These ones are, these, no, it's just these two that I was working with in that sound bed, but um, he's been having incredible things happening as far as um, clearing out stage fours, you know what. And um, having to really um, make it a members only, but it's detoxifies and oxidizes the body. And the, all of this is amazing. So I'm just trying to manifest the money to create a center where I can implement all of these tools and help people heal and step into their divine presence. 
You're just trying to help people step into their power and their divine presence. I don't think that's a just, that's amazing. It's an honorable, honorable mission, brother. And I'm so honored to be working and, and chatting with you. So thank you so much for your, your energy. And, and I look forward to seeing you in the groups and, and uh, we might have to get you on here in, in another month or so to kind of share the updates on all these things. Sounds like good. Wizardry, frequency <laughs> that you've been up to. So um, thanks for your time and, and everyone uh, reach out to Tony and, and get connected, share this around. And, and uh, we will be here next week on the Wealth to Health podcast. All right. Love you guys. Thank you. It was an honor. Bye. Thank you.